Most programming projects are tutorials that are dressed up as progress. You copy a bunch of code, tweak a few lines, and walk away having learned nothing. So that's why in this video, I'm going to share with you four programming projects that every developer needs to build. These cover the main things that actually make you a software engineer and will help you achieve real progress. Now, these projects aren't just cool demos. They're real software engineering projects that will teach you how things like Git work, system design, game engines, and are much more complex and things that will really help you become a real software developer. If you build even one of the projects on this list, you're going to understand and systems better than 90% of developers, and these are the type of projects that companies are looking for so you can actually land a job. Anyways, with that in mind, let's get into these four different projects, which are going to cover the following categories. Category one is tooling, then language design, networking, and game engines. Now, obviously, there's tons of other stuff that you could build, but these are the ones that I think are the most fun, most impactful, and that you actually can build even if you're not an expert software engineer. So let's get into the first one, which is something that you use every single day, but you probably don't understand how it works. Now, project number one is a mini version control system. So think something like Git, but just a really slimmed down version. Now, this means that you want to build something that has a command line interface that would allow you to have a staging area to add different files, to remove files, to commit those files, and then to keep track of the changes or the diffs between those. Now, obviously, there's tons of features that you could add to this, but even that alone is pretty complicated to build and would teach you a ton about software engineering. So if we think about why this project is impressive, it's because it's going to help you demystify Git. You're going to learn what's actually happening when you do something like create a Git commit, how content is stored using things like hashes, and how diffs are tracked. You're also going to learn how to reconstruct file trees, and it's going to give you a lower level understanding, and you're going to have to dive into tons of data structures and algorithms. Now, here's a few features or at least a few things that you'll learn if you were to build a project like this. Now, first, you're going to have to learn how to use SHA-1 or SHA-256 hashing to hash file contents and compare diffs. You're going to have to store file snapshots, something like in a .git folder or a hidden folder on your desktop, and then you're going to have to learn how to build a simple CLI or command line interface to run commands like git init, git commit, git add, git log, or whatever commands you're going to need for this kind of git light or simple version control software. If you have a project like this on your resume, it looks extremely impressive, but more importantly, it just teaches you a lot. You're building a real world tool, cloning something that already exists, and getting that deep in-depth knowledge on what's actually happening on a lower level when you use tools like git. So that's project number one. Now let's go to number two. So before we dive into project number two, I'm willing to bet that if you're watching this video, you're probably looking to break into tech or at least land that first job. Now that's where today's sponsor, 4Geeks Academy, comes in. Now 4Geeks Academy is a coding bootcamp that's changing the game with their unique approach to tech education. Unlike other bootcamps that leave you on your own once you finish the curriculum, 4Geeks Academy offers unlimited one-on-one -on -one coding mentorship and lifetime career support that means you'll have expert guidance not just during your training, but throughout your entire career journey. Now, they offer specialized programs in full stack software development, data science, machine learning, and cybersecurity, all designed to get you job ready in a matter of months to land that first role. Now, here's what makes 4Geeks really stand out. They're so confident in their training that they actually offer a job guarantee. That means that if you finish the program and you don't land a job, you can get all of your money back. Whether you're a complete beginner or you're looking to level up your skills, 4Geeks provides the personalized support that you need to succeed in tech. Now, if you're ready to transform your career, then click the link in the description and apply today. Thanks to 4Geeks for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back into it. Now, project number two on my list is to build a programming language interpreter. Now think of building like a really simple version of something like Python. So supporting variables, print statements, if statements, functions, and building an interpreter that can read code and actually execute all of that code. Now, that's exactly what you use every single day, especially when you use languages like Python. So why don't you try to build that? Try to make a small version that supports a few core syntax features. Now, this is way harder than it seems, but it's a fantastic project and it's going to teach you a ton of things like the list that I'm about to go through. Now, first, you're going to have to start with something like a tokenizer. You're going to have to break the input into various tokens. You're then going to have to parse all of this input or the code right into something like an abstract syntax tree. 
You're going to have to walk through the abstract syntax tree and evaluate each of the nodes doing recursive operations. And then you're maybe even going to have to build something like a REPL so you can run the language interactively. Obviously, that's kind of a bonus feature to add. Now, this is going to teach you the internals of how any language works, parsing source code, evaluating logic, managing the scope, executing expressions. It's crazy how deep you can go with this. But even if you just build a really, really basic interpreter that can handle a few different operations, it's still a really fantastic exercise size and a great project. Now, if you want a super simple example of this, a few years ago, I posted a video about a language called brain. OK, please blurp that out, editors. Now, this language is some crazy symbols, but it doesn't have an interpreter by default. So I actually built a really simple Python interpreter that could read the brain code and give me the output of what it actually means. So that's a super basic version of this, but you could go way further and make something really, really cool. So let's move now to project number three, which is to build an online multiplayer game. Now, the simplest game that you could probably build here is something like Tic-Tac-Toe. I actually have an entire tutorial series where I do this. But the reason for this is because it teaches you a ton of important networking concepts. When you build something like online Tic-Tac-Toe and you don't use an existing framework to do it, you need to implement WebSockets on your own. That means you need to handle communicating between different devices or clients, connecting them to some kind of room, handling disconnection events, all of the edge cases that can occur, but more importantly, syncing state across multiple devices and handling potential security concerns. For something like tic-tac-toe, you need to make sure the moves are in the correct order. If you wanted to get even fancier, you could set up something like a dedicated server and then have multiple clients connecting to it. Now, I've built a ton of these types of projects on my channel. You can actually see them in many live streams that I did. And I even built an online multiplayer Pictionary game where you had like a shared kind of grid and people were drawing on it and you could guess what the uh, actual like drawing was. And that was super complicated and I learned a ton. So the reason why I like this project is because the game is relatively simple. You don't need to be a game designer to do this, but handling all of the communication over something like WebSockets, syncing the state, dealing with potential security or hiding pieces of data really does teach you a lot. And it's pretty complicated and something that looks fantastic on a resume. Now, in terms of how to do this, what you'll need to do is set up something like a WebSocket server, or at least have one of the clients kind of act as the server. You're going to have to track multiple sessions, maybe multiple games if you want more than two people to be connected at once. You're going to have to handle moves from from multiple players. You're going to have to broadcast updates to all of the connected clients. You may even have something like matchmaking where you're grouping players based on an ELO system or how well they've performed in the past and then tracking global stats. Like there's so much stuff you could do with this type of project. And I'd be curious to hear what you guys would want to build for an online multiplayer game. So leave a comment down below. All right. So now let's move to project number four, which is to build a chess engine. Now you could do this in a CLI or a graphical user interface, but let me explain what I mean mean here. So first, you want to build just like the game of chess, allow two players, non robots to play against each other. At first, this seems simple, but there's a lot of things you need to do. You need to represent the board, you need to represent all of the pieces, ones that have been captured, ones that are currently on the board. You have to deal with edge cases like queening or on passant or castling the pieces. You have to deal with move validation, captures. There's all kinds of advanced stuff that you actually need to look at here. And it's not so simple to build out even just the move validation. Now, beyond that, once the game of chess actually functions, there's so many things you could add. For example, you could add timers, you could add an ELO system, you could make it work online, tie that with the previous project. But if you want to get more complicated, and what I would recommend is to build a chess engine. So when I mean engine, I mean like a bot that can play against you. Now, obviously, you're not going to be building Stockfish, but you could do something relatively simple where you look at something like the mini max algorithm, where you select a bunch of different possible moves and see which one leads to the best outcome at like, you know, four or five levels of depth. You can also use something like alpha beta pruning. This is an algorithm, a computer science algorithm that kind of goes with the mini max algorithm. You can be dealing with things like heaps, working with various data structures, and it can be really cool and teach you a ton about computer science principles. Now, in terms of how to do this, you have to evaluate positions with things like heuristics. You're going to need a way to actually move the pieces. So maybe you build like an interface at something like Pygame or Dekinter or maybe Web Canvas if you want to work with JavaScript. And overall, you're just going to learn a ton. And this is going to be a great project. And I know that because it's something I actually built in a 12 hour coding live stream, which you can find on this channel from many, many years ago. 
So all these projects I've worked on to some extent in the past, that's why I'm suggesting them in this video. And I know they teach you real software engineering skills. And even if you don't wanna put them on your resume, they're just something that's really good to tackle, that's honestly fun, and that you're gonna get a lot of rewarding feelings from. Now I'd highly suggest don't AI code these, don't vibe code them up, try to build them on your own, really use your brain, and you're gonna see how complicated they really are and how much you're gonna learn along the process. So that's what I have for you guys. Those are the four projects that I believe every programmer should try, or at least something in those categories. I think they really do teach you those foundational skills, and that's why I wanted to share them with you. So if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next one.